booktube it's missy and today i'm here to do a review for a middle grade book that i read for a book tour for algon quinn young readers and i was really excited because i received the arc and then i read the book from here i read the arc and then i received a hardcover of the book as well so this was unexpected i'm very grateful for having the hardcover because now i can now give do a giveaway of the arc if you guys are interested if you moms or grandmas want to win this then i will be doing the rules at the end of the video for the giveaway if you wanted to know what the difference between the hardcover and the arc is is that the hardcover has more colored um, illustrations whereas the uh, arc only has one page that has colored illustrations on it and then the other illustrations are in black and white whereas this one has about five or six pages of colored illustrations and then the rest is black and white but I'll show you guys underneath the dust jacket if you are interested in purchasing this book after my review um, I don't have any affiliate links or anything like that but you can always just go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon or wherever you go to buy books um, this is $18.95 if you are interested in buying it but underneath the dust jacket is the exact same picture as the the dust jacket itself. And then within the inside, the end pages just shows you the minerals and rocks. Now, I will be leaving my Goodreads link down below for the written review. My, my reviews on Goodreads are way more intricate than what I can give you guys on camera. I think it's because even though I've been doing this, for a few years this is going on I've been doing this since 2014 so six years now six yeah yeah six years now I've been on YouTube and I still get kind of nervous when I'm talking to you guys I don't know why and so I go I start talking faster and faster and faster and then I forget what I want to say whereas with my written reviews I can take my time and think about what I want to talk about and uh, yeah I, I do get middle grade and kids books every once in a while to review since I do have children and I always say yes when I get a re uh, email asking if I wanted to review them because I feel like you're never too old to read a kids book and I love that kids books always have like lessons to learn or at least majority of the time um, kids books have lessons to learn so I'm going to be reviewing Skunk and Badger by Amy Timberlake with pictures by John Klassen. And let's try and go over this correctly. We have um, two characters, as you can tell, Skunk and Badger, which I'm surprised Skunk is at the top of the, the title instead of Badger and Skunk. Maybe Skunk and Badger makes like it sounds better. But Skunk is not the main character. Badger is. So that's kind of funny. But this is supposed to be kind of like Winnie the Pooh meets Wallace and Gromit. And after reading this, I would also include Frog and Toad if you are as old as I am or if you have read a lot of like childhood classics. Frog and Toad are best friends. And I can see that this... Uh, Badger and Skunk are going to become best friends. This is the first book in what I think is a trilogy from what I remember reading. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to the entire series. Um, we start off with Badger living in a brownstone owned by his Aunt Lula. Who and Skunk is a new roommate for Badger. Um, they all live in this really cute city that has like brownstones on one side and then there's like hollows on the other and there's a bookstore for chickens and it's all very cute if you like like busy town or the Bernstein bear Bernstein bears um then you might like this or like I said Winnie the Pooh and Frog and Toad I really think that the characters are all very cute um, anyways, I just, I loved this book so much. One of the reasons why I love this book so much is because my son, um, who has autism, hates reading, picked this book up on his own. I did read like the first two chapters to him and then we were busy and I didn't read the rest with him. I read it by myself, but 
he ended up picking this up on his own and reading the entire thing in one sitting and he said he really enjoyed this book so now he gets fixated on the same books like so he'll read one book and if it was easy for him to read he'll keep reading it over and over and over again until he pretty much memorized it so that's like all of captain underpants all of cat and dog is it cat dog man not cat and dog dog man he has read all of those books and he loves them because they're easy to read but i like those books because they have like really good vocabulary in them and they also kind of teach at the same time and so does this book so that's a good segue if you are like me where when my kids were growing up I would say something and then I would give them several words that mean the same thing this book does that so um, Amy uses a lot of synonyms for words so you don't just get one word you get several that mean the same thing so it helps the child with their vocabulary it also does uh, the the one I did take notes on my phone but one of the words that I really liked was divulged and then right next to it it says uncovered which was really cool uh, here we have Badger who is a rock like a rock scientist he's not like a geologist well it doesn't say that but he does like to he has very important rock work to do every day he says and he has this rock room where he has all of the tools and it mentions all the tools and what they do which is super interesting I didn't know what these tools were called I knew about a rock tumbler but I didn't know about the brushes and the other tools that are used to look at rocks and I think it's really cool that the author included all that information because kids find things interesting and when they find something interesting they want to know all about that certain thing so this might spark an interest in a child who's now eager to learn about rocks which is very awesome and it has all the scientific names for the rocks so that's all cool too but yeah badger is a rock scientist he he figures out what the rocks are and then he names them and then sometimes they get published in an important uh, rock like newspaper or journal or magazine I can't remember what it said uh, but I just thought that was really cute I really enjoy talks about the difference between rocks and minerals again which I find really awesome and fascinating I didn't even know what a mineral a mineral was so to find out that a mineral is a single compound like material whereas a rock is several minerals combined to make the rock I didn't know that and I thought that was awesome to find that out uh, this also has what else does it have that you get to learn so you have the, the vocabulary which is really cool you have the science which is really cool and then we meet skunk who is a very good cook and so you get to like learn all the about these like recipes that he does and then there's chickens I didn't know I needed to know so much about chickens in my life, but finding this out, I wanted to look up every single breed of chicken and see what they looked like because there's no pictures of the chickens in the ark. I, maybe it's in the hardcover. Let me check it really quick because literally, like, uh, I was obsessed. Well, here, here's a picture of chickens, but it doesn't show you the different, like, breeds of the chickens. There's a hundred chickens in this book, and there's so many different breeds, and it was really fascinating. I mean, I've already known about the log horn, long, longhorn, leghorn, leghorn, because of Looney Tunes, but there's like, I, I don't even want to say it. There's so many breeds of chickens, and it all talks about it in this book. And not only that, but it also talks about math and quantum leap, because that's how the chickens go from one point to the other. So. The, the chickens are magical. They time travel. Or not time travel, but they're able to teleport to different places. I don't understand how that works, but it's so cool. And you get all this stuff in this little book. It's not even, it's only 200, is it 200? It's 100 and, 122 pages. It's full of all this information that you never knew you needed, but you want now. And it's for kids. And I just I absolutely love that. And the moral, like I said, is really, the book really is interesting because it just, I was talking about this in another review, but this whole year, 2020, has been very um, big on change and acceptance and um, 
understanding and this book really delves into that in a very kid-friendly way. So let me get all, now that we've talked about all of the stuff that I really like about this book, let's talk about what the book is actually about. And that's about Badger and Skunk. I told you about Badger. I said Skunk was like really into cooking. But they come together in this brownstone because of Aunt Lula, who is a Martin, which is part of the Weasel family. Again, things that you don't know and now you've learned. Um, so yeah, they live in this brownstone. Badger has been living alone by himself in this house that his aunt owns for who knows how long. And he doesn't know that Skunk is coming. He has four unopened letters from his aunt that are just sitting upstairs in his bedroom. I don't know why. He doesn't say why he doesn't open them, but he's just, you know, been lazy and he hasn't opened them yet. And when he finds Skunk on his doorstep, he's confused why Skunk is there. And Skunk's like, I know Aunt Lula. She told me that all, all about you. She said I could totally be your roommate. And Badger's like, ugh, I live alone. I have important rock work to do. I don't want you around. And so he starts putting his foot down and giving, like, Skunk rules on, you know, how to live in the house. Like, at first he gives him the smallest room in the house, which is actually a closet. And he goes, oh, it's a special guest closet. And Skunk goes in and he's like, oh, okay. But what uh, Badger doesn't know is like, Skunk is very optimistic. He's fine with it. He's like, okay, whatever. And the next morning he makes him breakfast and it's like this huge arrangement of food. And Badger's like, oh, okay, this is really good food. I am impressed. This might work. But when he finds out that skunk isn't going to clean the dishes again something else that you need to learn um, as a child that if someone cooks then you clean that's nature's law it's fair if I spent my whole time making dinner then you should be able to clean up the mess it's a trade you know what I mean and um, not every household is like that I cook and I also clean um, and that's because I'm afraid of my children washing the dishes because I don't want to taste soap and I don't want to see food encrusted on the dishes. <laughs> I know people are like, you're supposed to teach your children. I'm like, no. Uh, that, clothes, yes. You can, you can, you can mess up on, on laundry. Not on dishes that I'm going to be eating off of. I am that particular. I make sure that everything squeaks. I know it's absolutely clean because it's squeaking. I digress. <laughs> so, that is supposed to do the dishes after... Uh, skunk makes the food and eventually they come to an understanding but at the beginning Badger since he's lived alone this whole time he's like I don't understand I don't want to do this there's a lot of dishes and Skunk's like well I'm not doing it bye uh, but then yeah they they come to an understanding uh, Badger starts getting used to Skunk and then Skunk kind of makes him angry and every once in a while he'll make him angry and then he'll think well Maybe I don't want him here. Maybe I'll tell Aunt Lula that I don't want him here. I'm going to write to Aunt Lula and say, this is stupid. I don't want him. Um, but the moral of the story is that you have to accept people for the way they are and not try to change them. And at one point in the story, uh, Skunk is trying to get a... A animal away from the door. A stout, S-T-O-A-T. -I, I think that's how you say it, a stout. And that is also part of the weasel family. And the stout wants to come in and eat some of the chickens. And um, Skunk's like, no. And he protects the house by spraying the stout. But in the when he goes to spray the stout, Badger freaks out because he doesn't want Skunk to spray inside the house. And he jumps and he's like, no! And then he accidentally gets sprayed. He like jumps into the spray and he blames that on the skunk. And skunk's like, I didn't spray at you. You jumped in front of my spray. That's why you stink. And so, you know, Badger's like really upset. And when you get mad, sometimes you say things that you don't mean or things that are very hurtful that you wished you didn't say because sometimes you can't take words back and it really hurts people's feelings and that is exactly what happened in this story. So you're learning a bunch of vocabulary words. You're learning about science and math and breeds of chickens and you're learning a very important lesson about making sure 
that you don't overreact when you get mad, that you think about what you have to say, that you have this time to cool off before you get yourself in trouble. And, you know, Badger goes there. He says, you stink and you're dirty and all this other stuff. And Skunk's like, oh, okay. You know, he's, he's, he's clicking it. He's, he's like, that's eight things you don't like about me. And you're, you're bringing all skunks. Your generality, I think that's what he said. You're generalizing all skunks. And you're saying it's, it's me. So generalizing, you're being prejudiced against all skunks just because you got sprayed one time. And now you're calling me vermin. And I know when I'm not wanted. So if you don't, if you don't like skunks... Um, you'll never like skunks, so I'll, I'll leave. And Badger's like, oh, what did I do? At first he's like, good, get out of here. And I mean, that's how everybody acts, you know, when they're upset. They, they act like a child and very immature, and they're like, go then, I don't care, whatever. But then when they start cooling down, they realize, oh no, I did something bad. And Badger learns his lesson when he realizes all of the good qualities, all of the good things that Skunk has brought with him, his optimism and his, you know, positive, you know, like he's optimistic, but he's also energetic and bubbly and happy and, and he likes things and he's interested and he, he listens to Badger's stories and Badger's been lonely this whole time when he didn't even realize he was and Badger never leaves the house. He didn't even realize all of the things that was in the town until he went looking for skunk to, say, to apologize. And um, another thing that I learned in this book, or not me personally, I already knew this, but another thing a child could learn is the animals that he talked to throughout the neighborhood, they said, hey, you know, when you finally find skunk and you apologize, make sure you don't say, I'm sorry, but. If you, say, if you start your sentence out like that, then you're not being genuine and you're not actually apologizing. And again, that's a good lesson for children to learn. Um, I just found this book so, so good. I really want to thank Alden Quinn for, you know, reaching out to me and asking if I wanted to read this book. I looked at the picture, you know, they sent me like the cover and like a little snippet of what the book was about, but it just looked so cute that I knew I was going to love it, and I absolutely did. I gave it four stars because it's a kid's book, and I'm not, it's, you know, it's audience, it's age um, for this. But yeah, my son really liked it. I really liked it. You learn a lot. There's morals. It's just amazing. And it's the beginning of a series. And yeah, so I'm really excited about that. So if you are interested in winning this book, this arc, um, all you have to do is let me know down below. Just say, I would like to be put in the giveaway and only one person is winning obviously because I only have one arc and I'll just do you know the hat thing like I always do um this is being posted on Sunday September 20th you have until Wednesday to respond to this post whether or not you want to win this giveaway and then after that um I'll send it out either either Thursday or Friday depending on my um my work week. I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm exhausted after distance learning and sometimes I'm peppy and I'm fine and I can go run errands. Um, so yeah, I'll probably have this out in the mail either Thursday or Friday, but the actual giveaway ends on Wednesday. All of the information for that will be down below. I will leave all of the information for the author and the illustrator down below as well if you want to check out their Instagram. Um, and yeah, thank you Kelly for sending me this book. I really do apologize for this late video and that is it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday, that you guys had a good weekend and I thank you so much for watching this video and if you are interested in the giveaway, again, let me know down below and that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!